So I, first of all, I would like to thank organizers for uh, giving me a chance to give a talk here. So uh, I, this is for my second time to stay in Trieste, but I enjoy very much here. And I, yesterday I went to the town, and I found the town is very nice. And so and the seaside is very, also very beautiful. So very nice place. So today I talk about actually two, two topics. So one is not probability of ring polymers, such as DNA, and another one is new subject. Uh, I'm recently studying on uh, very graph-shaped polymers, and sometimes called topological polymers. And this talk is based on collaboration with Erika Uehara, who is my uh, postdoctor in Otonabe University, and, uh, and some a part of the results are published, and actually also depends on her uh, PhD thesis mainly, and uh, recently we also put archive some paper. So, and the first part, I will talk about noting probabilities of DNA model, and then second part, uh, generation ready and diffusion coefficients of topological polymers. Uh, this property sometimes called hydrodynamic properties in the field. Then, so, uh, noting, so actually, uh, so noting probability has already been addressed by uh, Peter's talk in the first day. But uh, here I will speak to DNA case. So uh, noting probability of a nicked circular DNA depends on the thickness of screening radius. And actually, in this talk, we uh, assume that DNA is modeled as a sequence of impenetrable cylinders. And here, why we consider impenetrable cylinders? Actually, uh, DNA itself is uh, negatively charged, and uh, as polyelectrolyte, the treatment is very difficult. However, uh, if we consider uh, mining author condensation, mining author condensation, uh, which occur uh, cylindrical geometry, uh, uh, idealistically it's a kind of infinite line and it has some negative charge, and then surrounding the negative charge, uh, counter ions are bound due to cylindrical geometry, and so uh, in total the cylinder uh, some, with some thickness uh, 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 con con uh, move or uh, uh, so this, this, this segments of cylinders are uh, consisting part of DNA considered. So actually, with this viewpoint, uh, and uh, uh, actually, uh, and the same problem has already been discussed or explained. Uh, actually, also an experimental measure in nice paper, uh, Rubenquist et al. Abolovsky group in PNAS, 1993, and Shaw and Warren in Science, 1993. Actually, these two papers are the. Um, Initial motivation for us to study, for me to study nothing probability actually, and but still I'm sticking on this problem 20 years. But anyway, uh, and then, so actually they measure uh, not probability uh, through random closure of nicked circular DNA, and uh, they compared also the uh, result with uh, experimental result with uh, a theoretical result, and somehow. Uh, consistent with short chain results, so so in the goal, 50 or something, 30 or something. But but anyway, uh, so they have some nice research. And recently, uh, quite different method was uh, uh, introduced through uh, solid solid state nanoports. Uh, they detect so uh, Kali Pulisar and his group uh, published recently. Uh, they detected uh, the not the DNA molecules such as 166 kilobase pairs. And so, uh, which also uh, makes uh, interesting to study a long uh, noting probability of long DNA chain as modeled through running uh, also condensation and a sequence of uh, impenetrable cylinders. And so, measuring noting probability in future of large DNA gives a test of coarse grained model of DNA as polyelectrolyte action. I think uh, this polyelectrolyte theory is very difficult and. Uh, not so much support or uh, development, or maybe, I know, maybe I'm ignorant, but this is a very difficult part of theoretical physics. So if you have some knowledge on this uh, property, polyelectrolytes uh, uh, obtained, then it would be very nice in physics. And so, for example, uh, this is a picture. So we consider a sequence of cylinders. And, uh, uh, and diameter is 2R. R here is radius. And, uh, uh, so, the cylindrical is, so DNA model as a cylindrical sac, self-avoiding polygon, is this, sometimes called discrete worm-like chain consisting of 
hard cylindrical segments with bending stiffness. And so we also consider bending stiffness. Here, theta i is the same notation with probably with Zhao's uh, talk, and uh, so the angle theta i may be, and, and we consider uh, the uh, length of the cylinder is unit, unit length. And here, uh, we say uh, it is uh, hard cylinder, uh, cylindrical segments, but uh, uh, we assume that the neighboring cylinders can overlap here, and the other ones do not overlap. So this is the uh, assumption of the model. And uh, this is, uh, due, actually, this radius r is determined through the uh, electrophoretic calculation or uh, screening calculation. So this is very difficult, and, uh, but to depend on the counter ions concentration. So uh, there are another story uh, here, so I cannot uh, discuss here today, but anyway, um, it is connections, many connections. And then, so, so actually, so just briefly, actually this part is the most difficult part, and I just briefly, so, so it, my, our result is maybe go back to the Stichter's paper in 1977, and uh, he saw that electrostatic repulsion makes the effective diameter much larger than the geometrical diameter. So electrophoretic repulsion gives you mainly by increase in screening length and elongation of the cone length itself, bending rigidity. So what will happen to uh, the knotting probability? So uh, actually, uh, so this problem, so we, uh, we did, uh, we denote by P and K, uh, K is the knot type and N is the number of segments, here cylindrical segments, and so uh, this, is give, this is the probability, and so idealistically if, if uh, this polymer is off lattice, then we consider a uh, partition function of uh, N segmental chain over partition function of all chain with all topology, all knot types. So this is the probability. And uh, if we, con so, so, and we consider, uh, uh, we approximate this ratio as this, so to coefficient times and power n and the exponential decay. And why we consider this? Because if we consider the uh, logarithmic expansion of this partition function in terms of the number of segments n, then the first part is linear n, and then next part is log n term and constant term. And they are appearing here. So this form, three parameter formula is uh, consistent with asymptotic expansion of a partition function concept, but of course, uh, this is off lattice model. We don't have any uh, realistic number of partition function, but uh, it is a model. Here, how we consider this function, and, uh, and actually, uh, for uh, the Bologoski's case and also our case, we introduce uh, some small parameter in initial. So this is cutoff like object, and uh, in terms of cutoff, we have four parameters, and then four parameters it gives a good, nice fitting curves uh, as a function of n and. Uh, uh, so this is we call four parameter formula or effective formula for knotting probability. And so we recall that the CK was actually measured in gel electrophoresis experiments through, uh, by Rubenkov et al, 1993, and uh, Shaw and Wan, and, uh, and, uh, and NK. So we have a conjecture that uh, this exponential decay. So actually this is coefficient of uh, bulk term and the exponential decay exponential decaying part, nk, and, uh, and this number uh, is conjecture that we have conjecture that it is con constant, equal to uh, the case of a trivial knot. And, uh, and actually, this number is already uh, investigated by Van Brensburg et al., 1991, and uh, for on lattice case, it is a huge number, 10 to the fifth order, so a very, very large number. On the other hand, for uh, and DNA experiments, uh, we consider number should be 100 or uh, 300 or something. So uh, quite different. But anyway, so and, uh, and there are some, several studies on this coefficient. For example, uh, Stella et al. discussed or already published paper actually, uh, uh, CK, the coefficient CK for uh, composite knots for lattice several voiding polygons. And actually, composite knot study was also done by recently many people and uh, I actually. I can't refer here, but anyway, I, I, I have to mention. And, 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 so, and also, the ratio of this uh, coefficient 
has also been discussed by Van Rensburg and Richnitz recently, and they are, uh, found that uh, this ratio is universal for uh, lattice types. So if different lattice types, if the number n uh, infinity, then the probability, then probability or ratio of this coefficient is something given by uh, con constant number. So it means universal, so appears. And furthermore, uh, today I discuss uh, this formula for n less than 50, but uh, uh, so n less than 50, you can, uh, no, anyway, there are no theory for uh, how you uh, uh, consider noting probability as a function of n. And uh, so other formulas are also useful and uh, in some purposes. So, uh, so I don't say any, only one formula is the effect. So anyway, so this is the situation. And uh, maybe we shall see more later. But uh, so uh, for this function concerned, uh, not probability is uh, oh, very nicely fitted by the function. And uh, for this is Gaussian polynomial case. And, uh, and this is a trifold knot probability. And this is two trifold knot probability, so compost knot. So yeah, actually, a similar picture was already shown by uh, Peter. So I, I, I think I should go further. And then, so first we consider the effect of bending rigidity. Then, uh, so actually, uh, so Erika showed this. This is the numerical data of self avoiding polygon result. And uh, not, not type 3, 1, 3, 4 case probability. And, and however, if we renormalize NK, then it is fitted by one function. And also the case with uh, figure eight not. So there are uh, st st stiffness uh, gives different uh, shapes. But uh, if you renormalize uh, NK, then we have the same dependence. So actually, so uh, as a result, uh, we found that the uh, bending rigidity is just uh, uh, changing the uh, number nk, which we call characteristic number of uh, number noting. But uh, so, so we consider next uh, the dependence on the uh, radius. And so actually, uh, trivial. So we first consider trivial not probability. It, it is given by exponential of number n. And uh, it was first shown by, I think, first shown by J. Michaels and Beagle in 1982. And later, with a Rotbit model, which has exclude volume, uh, Muskuma, uh, and Muskumar, 1991. And this result is uh, performed by Eric Wehara uh, for cylindrical case. So we, we start, this one denotes zero radius. So it is the most uh, easily uh, uh, not being trivial, non -tri becomes non-trivial. And uh, so if, if you increase the radius, so 0 0.05 and 0 0.01, 0 0.02, uh, then uh, 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 non-trivial not uh, not easy to generate it. So actually, she also per so performed 8,000 case, so large polygons. And then the number, uh, so maybe, so maybe I should discuss this one. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. So, 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 this, so we first discussed the uh, characteristic lengths uh, NK, and it, it, we found that as far as numerically, it is constant for different nodes. And it is expressed by the, uh, some exponential function of uh, screening radius R, as this. So there are tri trivial node and trifold node and figure eight node, and this is maybe a five one crossing and five two node. So, so she is very much fond of colors, and so, but sometimes it's not so easy to see in the screen. But anyway, so they are overlapping. And this is uh, uh, characters links for uh, different nodes. So, uh, so actually, each plotting, uh, the number deviates statistically. However, if you consider 145 nodes, so majority of these are compass nodes. Uh, so the rate of zero case is given by this. And this is almost constant. And the uh, red one is, uh, red uh, circles is given by the radius, 0 0.05 case. And the uh, triangle is given by 0 0.01, and so on. And so, uh, so they, they are almost uh, constant in, in trend, in total 145 knots. And so, 
uh, we, we believe that uh, the conjecture is co correct, so uh, valid. So nk is almost equal to n0. And uh, again, so we confirm the uh, good fitting to a probability of trifold not case. However, in this case, we have radius de dependence. So this is the number of segments, a number of, uh, this is the probability of trifold not. So first, I mean this one. And if uh, the radius increase, then uh, the, the uh, more, uh, so uh, the peak comes later, which, see. And so we also consider the uh, so coefficient dependence of radi radius. So then uh, they are given by uh, exponential decay uh, for four, except for three four naught, and four one naught, five one naught, five two naught, six crossing naught, seven crossing naught, and so on. And so they are somehow fitted by line. Uh, straight line, and uh, this one is almost, and uh, this one only trifold knot is increasing, but the other one uh, coefficient are uh, decreasing with respect to the radius. And this is the uh, uh, so, and this is the uh, coefficient for compass knots, and this is given by uh, product, and this is uh, this idea is. Con con uh, favorable to local knot picture. And uh, uh, this is the numerical data, uh, trifold knot coefficient, a uh, compass knot of uh, uh, coefficient. And uh, the line is given by the uh, product of uh, compass knot. So the so not their the lines are not the fitting line, just the calculation, but uh, somehow very nicely fit. So for the four parameter formula, uh, somehow has some uh, nice uh, behavior in the, also in the coefficient. And furthermore, so I just mentioned that connection to asymptotic expansion, and so, uh, so some years ago we discussed this line, but uh, we don't conclude the MK equal one, but uh, this time we have some progress that, uh, so these are uh, uh, the P probability <coughs> or divided by coefficient versus uh, variable N over NK, and uh, so they are all fit, so their colors are different uh, prime knots, three one knots, four one knots, five one knots, five two knots, and they are all fit in the same line. And so uh, for actually, uh, for N is larger than 100, if we throw away the uh, small number segment of case, then we found that uh, uh, this three parameter formula fits very well to the data, and furthermore, uh, the MKs are given by integers. So, so now we have the connection to the large N uh, result of the self lattice model, and so, uh, so for example, this is the data. So this is too precise, I'm sorry, but uh, so this is the fitting parameters, and uh, 0 0.96 something like, and so it's almost close to one. And this is figure eight not and 1.05, 1.01, 1.02 plus minus something, and so it is uh, very close to one. And so uh, if we uh, consider only large n case, then the uh, formula gives uh, a integer uh, exponent. And so the conclusion of part one is that uh, noting probability of cylindrical polygons is expressed as a function of n and radius r, which is uh, so somehow screening radius and should be compared with the experiment. And this uh, coefficient uh, of a few prime knots are given, uh, sorry, given. Here, we can estimate knots, uh, probabilities, P and K for many compass knots, such as 145 knots. So through the uh, empirical formula for a coefficient and uh, uh, exponent and uh, so on, and NK constant probability behavior. And furthermore, Asymptotic expansion with integer exponent mk is consistent with the data for large n, such as n larger than 100. So if you consider not the experiments of uh, Borogotsky et al., they have uh, compared the result with n 20 or 30 case. And so in that case, it is very hard to see the asymptotic expansion. But uh, if you neglect a uh, uh, small n case, and in this time, we have performed 8,000 uh, polygons, very large one, and then we found that uh, a knotting probability uh, formula is consistent with the uh, some expansion, so which is, uh, in some sense, large n case is connected to lattice result. 
And furthermore, I don't mention here today, but uh, if radius is given by one fourth, which means that diameter uh, one one eighth, and which means that diameter is given by one fourth, the uh, uh, coefficient ratio is consistent with the Rehinitzer's case. So they have uh, once Brook and uh, Rehinitzer's uh, shown uh, uh, coefficient universality. So somehow uh, this formula uh, connects. Uh, uh, large end region and small end region in, is not connected, but interpolates. So this is not true formula, but uh, it gives you nice interpolation from large end case to small end case, and so it must be useful for studying noting probability in DNA. So this is the conclusion of the first part. And now, then, so we <laughs> have, I would like to discuss another subject that uh, so, uh, we call topological polymers. So we first discuss definition of topological polymers, and then, so, behaviors. And actually, here, uh, we perform molecular dynamic simulation through lamps and uh, uh, result of uh, uh, Tsubame supercomputer. And first, so we define first topological polymers. So, actually, so, so, so ring polymers is very interesting, but uh, uh, in uh, chemistry, uh, pe people consider more complex objects like double ring polymer. And actually, double ring polymer, the paper was first published by uh, Fukatsu and uh, Kurata, Japanese researcher, but it's, it is 1966. So almost uh, I was born at that time anyway, so a very long time ago. And, uh, and this is called Tatpole polymer, which will appear also in uh, uh, Joanna's talk later tomorrow, I hope. And, uh, and so recently, there are many people who are producing tricyclic or many multicyclic polymers like this shape. And so, so synthetic chemistry people are enthusiastic in producing many complex uh, polymers. And so, uh, so and they actually, they are uh, trivial as a topology of spatial graphs. But uh, somehow, these people are already coded them topological polymers. And so I say that in this talk that polymers with complex structure in chemical connectivity and those of complex topology because by spatial graphs both be called topological polymers. Otherwise, uh, it is confusing. So, so the, the, it, as topological polymers, I say two ways. So please remember this definition. So, and then, so I show that, for example, uh, Tezuka group in Tokyo Institute of Technology uh, produce uh, very complicated polymers through electrostatic self-assembly method and covalent bonding fixation, which means that uh, first they uh, pull uh, polymers with some segments using the ionic force, so electrostatic force, and so it is electrostatic self-assembly, and then later they replace this connection by covalent bonding, and then it is becomes permanent. And I, I don't understand yet, but how they do this uh, chemical reactions. But just I show you the result of the picture. So something like this kind of object I uh, obtain. And so starting from this, somehow they connect to this and here. And uh, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, so and for and furthermore, recently they have produced a polymer of a complete bipartite graph, KC3 polymer. So uh, starting from this object, start uh, connecting, 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 then they have this one and this one. And this is the k 3 uh, graph, which is uh, simplest non-planar spatial graph. And here we say that it, is, it can be called as topological polymer in the sense of uh, spatial graphs. But uh, they don't uh, uh, distinguish this object and this object because they are all produced in the same time. And so they just call them topological polymers and so I say that this is just a spatial graph, maybe topology, topology is trivial, but uh, uh, the structure is complex and uh, gra expressed by graphs. And this is, uh, uh, the structure is also complex, uh, expressed by graph, but uh, also as a spatial graph, this non-trivial, uh, or can be non-trivial. So, uh, so anyway, uh, so this is the object. So, I, so actually, so we uh, again say that polymers with non-trivial structure in chemical connectivity expressed by graphs and polymers with non-trivial topology expressed by spatial graphs. Both we call topological polymers. Then everything happy. And uh, this is theta-shaped uh, graph. 
topological trivial and and uh, and it gives non planar graph. Here, yeah, then the problem. So now, now let us study the uh, statistical properties of these graphs. So, so actually, it is uh, it looks easy, but actually not so. Because if you construct such a kind of object by random walk, you have maybe first polygon and then connect this one, this one, and two points again, two points again. So um, you have to add three more edges to connect and uh, given. Uh, starting point or an ending point. So, which means that, the, so in order to investigate the topological polymer systematically uh, through simulation, uh, fast algorithm for generating an ensemble of topological polymers uh, with given graph, uh, we, we want to generate uh, such random walks that connect given two points in three dimensions. And this is, uh, looks very easy, but not so uh, easy because uh, it seems that we need n cubic time to generate such random walks connecting given two points. And then it is a very hard calculation even for random polygon, random walks, because uh, usually uh, uh, a dynamic simulation is something like n cubic, uh, no, 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 n square time calculation, but uh, in this case, uh, it still uh, needs n cubic uh, computation. It is very hard. Then, so I made a very nice uh, uh, pa uh, paper anyway. So there, then we have found that uh, another approach possible. So uh, quaternion method for generating random polygons. And this is in collaboration with Cantarella and Sean Kuwaila and uh, uh, a prototype for generating equilateral random polygons. And, and this, uh, this connection uh, it will be discussed by Jason tomorrow. So please listen to his talk anyway. So it is, he, he, you can uh, listen and understand the connection to this uh, here. But anyway, so this gives a linear time algorithm for generating random walks connecting given two points in three dimensions. And so uh, quaternion, let me briefly explain quaternions. So quaternions method. Uh, so quaternions are uh, uh, basis are IJK, uh, IJK, three bases, imaginary basis, and the square is given by minus one, and they are anti-commuting, ij equal minus ji equal k, and with coefficient alpha, beta, gamma, delta, uh, they are real numbers, and so we express uh, uh, quaternions in terms of the basis. And uh, this basis also expressed as a two, in terms of uh, two uh, again, complex numbers, u, u1 plus u2i, so u1, u2 are uh, uh, real number, and V1, V2 are real number, and I is imaginary number, and then H is given by U plus Vj. Then, so, uh, ho so, so through hop map, so hop map maps uh, quaternion to H conjugate times IH, and it gives uh, zero uh, constant uh, in the uh, real number part. And so here, i and j and k. And the coefficient of uh, a basis, i, j, k, we consider uh, a position vector in three dimension. Then, somehow, we construct uh, any random quaternions leading to a random polygon of n nodes. So this method gives uh, an another way to construct a random polygon of n nodes. And uh, for example, uh, if you consider a set of uh, a n set of vectors, uh, three dimensional vectors, and uh, okay, okay, so uh, h is given by uh, n, n uh, vector and n uh, quaternions, and uh, h vector is uh, consisting of n quaternions, and uh, and if we consider the map of uh, this one, hop map of this object, then we have a n set of uh, real numbers, three real numbers, which means that bond vector. And so with this bond bonds, uh, we consider a uh, polygon. And, uh, and this condition, uh, so uh, initial point and uh, closing point is the same, is given by uh, very simply uh, some of this, uh, some of these conditions, uh, this part, this part, this part, vanish for n, n vectors, n, n quaternions. And so, uh, actually, uh, it gives you 
uh, linear time algorithm for connecting, uh, constructing the uh, random polygon. And similarly, we can construct uh, any uh, random walk which starting from origin and ending another given point. Uh, this, uh, we can construct, similarly construct uh, this random, random walk through this uh, hop map method. Anyway, and then we, so we calculate the uh, uh, okay, physical quantities first. Uh, we calculate the mean square rate of gyration uh, for ideal chains, which means that the quaternion method algorithm. And then here is lasso uh, ring and double ring, theta carb polymer and K33 polymer. And this is uh, segment and mean square rate of gyration. And of course, this is ideal chain, so it is linear. Yeah. How, so very quick, quickly co construct, calculate this object. And uh, then we compare uh, this result with molecular dynamic simulation of Kramer crest model. Uh, so mean square rate of gyration with exclude, exclude volume case. So actually, we perform Tsubame computer of Tokyo Institute of Technology uh, through lamps. And uh, uh, we have a real polymer case, real chain result. And again, topolo this is a linear chain, and TATPO polymer, ring polymer, and double ring polymer, theta polymer, and uh, KC3 polymer. And uh, compared to this result and previous one, we see that uh, very much similar, so almost overlapping. So this one and this one. And the majority, ma maybe uh, the most difficult, different part is something like this. So the double ring and theta curve are here very close, but uh, if you go this way, then it is somehow distinct. And so, uh, with this result, we have a conjecture that the ratio among the uh, mean square radius gyration uh, for ideal topological polymers are similar to those for real ones if graph F have at most trivalent vertices. So, so, so our conjecture is something, so this double ring polymer here, one point is tri uh, forbalent, and this becomes uh, the size larger for the real polymer case because uh, excluded volume effect, uh, this uh, for forbalent uh, repel each other and uh, becomes larger. However, other, other points are only trivalent vertices, and so the ratio, of course, the exponent is different, but the ratio of the uh, 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 mean square of gyration among the polymers with excluded by different graphs are similar. So, and actually, this is also in agreement with Tezuka's observation in SEC experiments. So, size exclusion experiment observed many data of uh, mean squared rate of gyration experimentally, and he felt something like that. For example, uh, these are the uh, polymers, uh, uh, and these are the calculation result is the the distribution of the mean square rate of gyration for polymers with this factor and this one, red one is something like this. And th this is complete graph and the most steepest one. And then uh, they can be compared with the uh, size exclusion SEC charts of, they say, that's a dicyclic and tricyclic polymers is uh, something like this. And this order is consistent with the order of uh, ideal topological, uh, ideal uh, calculation. And so, uh, as far as uh, this obfuscation uh, explain, uh, a quaternion method is very useful to calculate. And then we also consider the uh, diffusion coefficient. And here, uh, we assume the Kirkwood's approximation for diffusion coefficient. And uh, somehow, we calculate the inverse radius of two segments. N and M's are uh, segment, N segment and M segment of polymer, and uh, the distance and inverse, and all sums. And this is the co uh, something like coefficient. So, so uh, and this quantity we sometimes call inverse of uh, uh, hydrodynamic radius. And uh, so, observable quantity must be something like the ratio of mean square rate gyration over uh, this. Uh, uh, hydrodynamic radius. And uh, so the ratio decreases as the polymer becomes more complex. Because this one is linear case. This one is tato pole case. And this one gives a double point ring polymer. And this one 
triple ring polymer and quadruple ring polymers are more complex than, than the ratio decreases. And this, so this is the argument that, uh, so because uh, mean square rate of gyration is the uh, average of R squared, this R means the distance between two uh, segments. So here we consider the distribution function of distance between two segments of polymer. Or maybe we can say it pair correlation function of the polymer. And then, so we consider, assume that the distance uh, R is given by R bar, average value and uh, deviation delta R. And then uh, the variance sigma square is given by delta R squared average. And uh, so uh, the mean square rate of gyration, uh, no, no, uh, R squared average then uh, is given by R bar squared plus uh, sigma square. This is a well known result. And however, if we consider, in order to consider the uh, diffusion coefficient, we consider average of 1 over r, r inverse. And then, if you assume that r bar is much larger than the standard deviation sigma, we may approximate this as this. So, the first term is given by average over 1, and the second term is expansion, and the third term is given by square delta r, something like that. And this term remains uh, under the average. And so, uh, as this approximation, uh, ratio rg over rh is given by uh, sigma square over r bar square. So, if the uh, uh, distribution of the distance is uh, sharper, then the ratio becomes small. So this is the physical meaning of this quantity. And uh, from the viewpoint of the innovation group, I, we expect that the ratio must be universal for different models. And so probably this ratio measurement is uh, very uh, useful for experiments and comparison. And then more, a little bit uh, more information. So we also consider, so, uh, so, so this is the pair distribution function. So this is the most difficult part. So we define FR, the probability distribution of distance between two segments of a polymer. And so FR dr denotes the number of segment pairs with distance larger than r and smaller than r plus delta r. And uh, uh, so we assume n segments in volume V. And so global segmental density is rho is given by n by over D. And uh, local segment, we consider local segmental density, rho r, the sum over delta function at rj. And then pair distribution function is given by rho r times rho zero. So here we assume the homogeneous and system and, and extraction value and uh, uniform. Uh, so uh, shift is the same. And then, uh, so the probability distribution function of distance is given by this pair distribution function times uh, a partial volume of the uh, spherical volume. Actually, for ring polymers, we can calculate exactly uh, the pair distribution function is given by 2x exponential minus squared, with x is given by r over r, rms. Here, rms means root mean square, so uh, r square over uh, fr, and uh, uh, we take that up square root, then it, it, is, it is given by rms, and so it, so it is an exact result. And then we, okay, okay. and this is interesting because uh, some years ago, uh, the Kurazo discussed the short range power load behavior of interchain correlation, and we can compare this result. So for example, he discussed end-to-end -end distance distribution function for small r, rg is given by 0.23, and end-to-end -end middle, end middle distance distribution is given by theta 1, and theta 1 is given 0.46. And middle to middle point distance distribution, so which means that uh, uh, if you consider a polymer, and some point here, middle point and middle point, then uh, distance is r, and then this distribution shows the exponent uh, 0 0.7. And since majority of point pairs are given by uh, 0 0.7, uh, distance distribution function shows uh, theta is given by 0 0.7 for a small distance. This is uh, the logic and argument. And then, 
So for example, first we show the distance distribution function of uh, ideal topological polymer with 500 is given by this. And, uh, and so if you uh, uh, normalize the distance by the root mean square distance r, then it is almost overlapping, but uh, small difference. And small difference uh, because, uh, for example, uh, comp uh, so, uh, so this uh, purple line is the most uh, steepest, sharper, sharpest one. And so it gives the uh, smallest uh, ratio of RG over RH. So this is more complex. And theta curve is something like more uh, wider. And so and the link case is the second, uh, third, uh, the less uh, steep, sharp. So it, it gives the different RG over RH, the ratio. And then, so for, so in the more interesting case is the uh, real chain case. And for, this is, shows N equals 300, and uh, double logarithmic scale of uh, distance distribution function. And then it shows uh, something like this. So this is the linear chain result. And this line is uh, exponent 0 0.7. And this uh, blue one and green one is ring polymer case. And this is again uh, fitted with the same uh, curve uh, uh, and gradient 0 0.7. However, for a theta curve case, so you have, it has two trivalent vertices, somehow, the short distance behavior is more steeper and the uh, correlation holds larger and which gives 0 0.9 exponent. And uh, for a complete bipartite graph, K33, uh, exponent is given 1.15. So much larger uh, correlation hole it appears. So, uh, and for n equal 400 case, uh, we also show short distance power of behavior. Uh, for, this is normal distance and uh, and the uh, K3 series is the, uh, this one, and the theta curve is red one, and the green case is green one. And then, um, so this is log di uh, double logarithmic scale, and then uh, again, uh, it gives uh, the same gradient. So for ring case, it gives 0 0.7 exponent, while uh, theta curve case, it gives uh, 0 0.9. And for complete bipartite graph case, 1.15. So uh, coordination hole uh, becomes larger for uh, polymers with more complex graph. Okay. So this is concluding of the part two. So uh, quaternion method is useful for setting topological polymers. Computational time is uh, linear, and this is uh, very useful uh, as a method, probably. And, uh, and so, uh, please, uh, I know, I know, uh, so maybe tomorrow uh, Jason discuss about the background of this kind of algorithm. But anyway, and uh, it neglects uh, excluded volume. However, it can be applied to any topological polymer with complex structure, in particular uh, for such graphs that have up to trivalent vertices. And then it gives. Uh, a, uh, you can estimate the uh, real value, uh, real polymer case value, for example, mean square ratio gyration and uh, hydrodynamic radius or uh, diffusion coefficient. Uh, uh, and so uh, it is, must be very useful. And uh, so with the con 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 correspondence, we have confirmed with molecular dynamic simulation of Kramer crest model. So, uh, and so as the structure in chemical connectivity or topology of a polymer becomes complex, then the ratio RG over RH becomes smaller. And it reflects the increase of constant constraints in the polymer. Actually, uh, this ratio suggests more sharper the distribution function of distance of two segments, and uh, which means that uh, if more constraints among the segments uh, increase, then uh, you have more sharper uh, profile, and so it gives you the smaller value of this ratio. And furthermore, the short distance behavior is much enhanced for real topological polymers with complex graphs, and power law exponent increase for complex graphs. And, uh, and we hope it can be seen in uh, large-scale behavior in through experience, scattering experiment. 
And anyway, this is the uh, final uh, concrete remark that uh, the first part we have discussed uh, noting probability of DNA knots. Here, topology is considered a non trivial topology. Part two is uh, hydrodynamic properties of topological polymers expressed by graphs. And topology is trivial as embeddings, but uh, maybe in future we, we extend this uh, situation more. Uh, uh, connecting the, the result of the knots result and so more topological aspects. Anyway, new technique in polymer chemistry plus uh, combined with developments in the mathematics gives a new approaches to topological effects in polymer physics. So finally, I uh, acknowledgement. So so we ha so in collaboration with Hirose, Inoue, Tanaka, they are uh, Ochanomi University students and Tokyo Science University students. And uh, for a uh, quote method, we have co collaborated with Jason Cantarella and Clayton Sean Kuwaila. And actually, for uh, high uh, molecular dynamic simulation, we have uh, supported by the grants in aid with Professor Shimokawa and Tezuka. So Shimokawa is the, uh, he appeared in the collaboration with uh, Mario's talk. So the same Shimokawa, actually. Yeah. And this is the uh, uh, people in my laboratory. So she is Erika Wehra. And so she is Hirose-san and Inoue-san. So anyway, this is my talk. <laughs>